Right, so I've replaced the aerial connector now, um, and it seems to work. So, if we turn it on, it's noise. Now, the only downside is it only tunes into classic stations. So we got classic FM, and then Radio Free. So I'm not even sure why I bother fixing it. To be fair. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's just a signal issue or what, but yeah, it just, it just likes the classic stations only for some reason. <laughs> oh well. Right, so... Well, that utter disappointment. Indicate stalk. So, it will latch. One way. But not the other way. It appears to be due to wear on as a little, like a... Uh, little lobes it sits over very very gently and obviously then you've got your mechanism here which will be used to cancel it as you turn the wheel but on that one there they seem to be worn down a bit more than the other side so maybe it's done more left hand turns right hand turns sorry which could be a case in America we're not a brand story <laughs> so not ideal but the only thing I think of trying to do is, this is a riveted together unit, you can't actually alter it. And I can imagine it's going to be quite hard to find another one of these. So one way or another, going to have to either strip it down apart and re it back together. Or I'm going to try and modify it so that it does just sit onto a little lobe again. I'm not sure it's going to work, so we'll just have to give it a go. Alright, so it looks like another success. We've now got a mechanism which latches up as well. What it is is down to wear and tear in this uh, little like, cam kind of setup where it would, well not cam but it would set up these notches. Um, it's a bit too worn so I've had to file it down a bit to create a recess for it to latch into. Can't really show you on a GoPro because it doesn't zoom. Um, but it now latches, it's not perfect. It would benefit from a new one one day but it's better than nothing and at least it works now. So we'll get this put, pop back on and test at the moment and then we'll go from there again. Add some. All right, let's give it a go. See what works. Perfect. I don't know if the cancelling works on it. Yep, and then if we go for... Yeah. Spot on. There you go. Right, this feels weird because a lot of things are fixed now. So, cluster lights, and then really it's the um, heating controls and the dashing are back together. Yeah. So we've got a bit of broken plastic back here on the heating controls we've got to look at, um, with a cable which selects the temperature. So we'll take a peek at that. But whilst I'm on electrics, I might as well take a quick look at these lamps on the dashboard here and see what's going on with them. So, see you in a minute. So the cluster out, we're checking the lamps work. Um, I'm able to probe some of them, so I've wired up the to the original um, sort of dash lighting feed, and I'm just probing the lights. And you can see some they do actually come on and work, but obviously if you vibe not one, they should all come on because they're all part of the same circuit. But so far, it's mostly been unsuccessful. A couple have come on at a few points, but... Majority no. Obviously some of these are also um, different kind of indicator lights. I was just testing them as well to see if they work. That one does. That one does. That one does. This one here doesn't seem to be top here. 
Oh no, he does. He's got dodgy connections. Yeah. That one hasn't come on at all yet. This one here appears not to work. Now you've got to be very careful with these old Ford clusters because they got the old PCBs on the back and they are very fragile now. Quite unreliable and very fragile. It can be a pain getting things out. Ah. That lamp's burnt. Anyway, she's been in contact with something. Does it work? It actually does work. So, next question is why? Why isn't it working when it's on the PCB? Probably a million reasons. So, I've up the PCB from this point here. Only this one comes on. <laughs> Not that one or that one, which all come on at the same point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up all of these connections in a minute, and I'm going to come back and see if we can get more working. As you may be able to see, things have escalated a tad. We've now um, ended up taking the front of the clocks off, because I noticed when I was looking at the connections at the back, it's got the um, typical old Ford thing where the lamps shine through a uh, clear sort of well, a semi-translucent, transparent, whatever you call it, um, bluey green sort of colour. Now, these lamps, I mean, they look a fair size. I'm not sure if they're standard wattage or whether they've advanced ones, but either way, over the years, these are heated, they've dried out and cracked up, so no wonder we couldn't see the clocks working is because there's basically no light there. So I'll show you on the phone in a minute what I'm actually on about. Right, so here we are. As you can see down there, that is where the lamp should be. Now, no wonder the light isn't getting through that. Or oh, the same up here, you'll see all the burn marks. Let's uh, turn the light on a minute. All the burn marks. And then down here again, completely screwed. So, no matter what, they've got to go. They're no good. Um, whether we get replacement ones or not, it's a different story. But I'll speak to the owner of the car and see how he wants to go about it. Um, whether we do some kind of LED retrofit. Um, or whether we can get new caps like that and make sure we've got the correct size lamps to go in the holders not sure yet but we'll get them all working anyway and we'll get the green bits removed and at least we uh have some kind of backlighting well that's the all parts of the old lenses removed didn't take much just push them with a screwdriver and they crumbled to bits <laughs> so they're all out now i've gave the contact bit clean up but i can see they're all heavily worn um so I'm not sure how well it's going to go in the end. The... Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll test each lamp one by one and pop them back in. Just to ensure they're working first. So. Yep. And what I'm doing is I'm testing from the contacts on the lamp holder to ensure that the contacts from the lamp to the holder are good and then I know the contacts on the holder are fine so they will then it only leaves error for the contacts not to work on the PCB that kind of makes sense so we'll get them I don't like the look of this one over here he's a bit of a heavily worn he is oh, we'll get him popped back in One, two, three, four, all working. <laughs> the simple things really, it pleased me. 
So, we'll just put the parking lights off a minute. Disconnect this. I'll give the main PCB connections a quick clean up. They're not too bad, missing, so not corroded or anything. Right, let's pop it in and see if it works. Spot on. Right, well, I think that probably concludes it for this video. So I would say we've done pretty well. We've now got full dashboard illumination working. We got the blower motor all working. The AC clutch is working. The hazards are now working, the indicators are stopping up and working. Short of cleaning up the fuse box and then tidying the electrics up. Now that is the electrics done, I think. Everything now works, which is good considering when I first got the car, most of it didn't work. Um, the other half it was fried. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I already mentioned this now, but it has been confirmed that the previous owner did in fact go and connect up the battery backwards on it, which has done it no favours whatsoever. Um, let these things happen, so everything's fixable and it has been fixed. So hopefully next video we'll be replacing all these vacuum lines in here and getting the heat and motor you know, controls working again. And then into bay to start sorting out all them vacuum bits which I've been dreading but I've really kindly been given a diagram. So. Although it's for the 2.3 Lima as opposed to the 2.8 Cologne in the Capri, I think it's got enough information from it that I can work out based on the carb details and the vacuum diagrams that I can kind of work my way through the car and work out what's needed, what's what not, not needed. So, I think that must be it, yeah. So if you happen to have enjoyed the fault finding and if the footage happens to be any better quality now i've got some lights and i've tried some different settings on a gopro for this set episode so i'll know when i come to edit it, if it's any good if it was terrible i'm sorry if it's better then we'll stick with this way and try and get some better footage i know it's not been great um yeah if you've enjoyed the content and maybe talk to something maybe drop me a comment tell me what you think like the video certainly share the video if you want to and um subscribe for the next episode and until then i'll see you next time Oh! <laughs>